So Galatians chapter 5 is where we are. And uh, Galatians chapter 5 is pivotal. He's changing in directions in Galatians 5. So he's changing, he's going, you're going to see him transition from talking about where they've come from. He's been for four chapters, he's been, he's been harping on where they were and what's been going wrong. And he's going to move them in the direction of where they need to go from here. Uh, but he's not changing the subject, and that's really important because we tend to segment even these individual books into their own completely different ideas, and they're not. It's all he's talking about, all the same thing throughout the whole book. Actually, honestly, if you read through the Pauline epistles, he only has like four subjects he talks about. That's it in all of them. He just goes over them over and over and over again. It's the same subjects over and over again. Um, it's important to understand that the antinomian or the 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 position that that Galatians is against or teaches freedom from the Torah is a valid interpretation of the text of Galatians. Provided you're okay with Paul being a liar. Because it completely conflicts with everything else he says. Not, well, unless you pull key passages here, here, and there, which is what a lot of people do. But if you just sit down and read Galatians, you can understand it each time to mean that, oh, he's saying this is against the law. Or he, the law is not valid for us anymore. Uh, if you're just reading Galatians. Because you're going to read through that, and you're going to see that when you go through that. Oh yeah, Galatians. You know, you can, you can it's just Galatians. You know, by itself, you can interpret it, even in Greek. The thing is, though, but 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 that conflicts with Paul. Paul ends up being a liar uh, if he does that. Um, Galatians five one. It says this is uh, New American Standard, so I'm going to stumble over it a bit because my King James was in the trunk of the car. And so I just grabbed this one. Uh, it was Galatians 5.1. It was for freedom that Christ set us free. Therefore, keep standing firm and do not be subject again to the yoke of slavery. Uh, it's interesting, this idea of standing fast or standing firm, holding fast. Clinging is, the, is a real tenacious kind of word. It's interesting because we want to say, oh, it's leg yoke of slavery. That, well, that we, we've been taught that that means, oh, that's Judaism. Uh, and yet it's kind of funny because if you look at 2 Thessalonians 2.15, he says, stand fast and hold to the traditions which you've been taught. Well, it hasn't been around long enough for the be Christian traditions. These are Jewish traditions. In fact, Acts 28.17, uh, Paul says, it's, it's, it's in, in a little phrase in a big verse. So if you, it's hard to use as a proof test, but text, but in Acts 28.17, Paul says this. He's never, he's never done anything against our people, the Jewish people, and the customs, the traditions of our fathers. So those are, he's talking to the Jews in Rome when he says that. And so he's talking about the Jewish customs and the Jewish traditions. So he's always done them. He's never done anything against those. And so if we, if we interpret Galatians 5.1 as saying, don't be subject again to the yoke of slavery and calling the yoke of slavery Judaism. That's a direct conflict, what he says in 2 Thessalonians 2.15 and Acts 28.17. So the reason why I'm sharing this is because this is going to come up for over and over and over and over again. And we're even, even reading the book of Galatians, we're going to go, huh, what is this? And then so we have to go back and find out, okay, who is Paul and what's he saying? So yoke of slavery, actually, if you find that the idea of slavery Pretty consistently through Paul's writings, he's always talking about carnality, our, our human nature, our sin nature. That's the yoke of bondage that, that Paul's fairly consistently talking about. There's a couple of verses that you can go, eh, to disprove that. But, but as a rule, it, the word shows up, I don't know, 15, 15 times in Pauline epistles. I think twice uh, he's, he's actually contrasting uh, you know, uh, we're in Romans where he says you're either a slave to righteousness or a slave to sin. That's the word that's used in there. Um, 
So you can say, well, he uses it for, say, slave to righteousness there. But, but as a rule, take a look at 1 Corinthians 9, 19 through 20. Nineteen through twenty-two. He says, "For though I am free from all men, I have made myself a slave to all, that I might win the win the more. And to the Jews I became as a Jew, that I might win Jews. And to those that are under the law, as under the law, though not being myself under the law, that I might uh, that I might win those who are under the law. So, boy, some folks grab onto that, don't they, and say, Paul's not under the law. It says here, right here." But if you keep reading, so many times people say that, it's just say, keep reading. He says, to those who are without law, as without law, though not being without the law of God, but under the law of Christ, that I might win those who are without the law. So basically, really all he's saying in this, in this text is know your audience. Okay. If you're talking to Gaulists of Upper Mesopotamia, to bring out the Torah and start explaining the, the, the doctrines of the Messiah from the Torah, they're going to be lost. They're not going to understand what that's all about at all. So um, that, that's really all that, that's saying. But and it's interesting here because he says he's not without the law of God. He, he himself is, remains subject to the law of God. That's, there are no such things, in, there are no redundancies in Scripture. So why does Paul say the law of God, and distinguish the law of God from the law of Christ. Because, the reason is because in Galatia, these Pharisees that, that, that have come in to say that you have to be circumcised in order to be in heaven, they're using the law, they're teaching the law. And they will, they'll tell you that's the law of God. But it's not the law of Christ. Right. It's not the law of the Messiah. It's, it's a... It's, it's a it's like having a padlock without the key. You know, it's, it's, the, it's, it's taking the law of God in carnal terms and not understanding that it's a spiritual uh, document. That's Romans chapter 3. Cool on that? Um, yeah, these guys, yeah, see, the, this is referring back, because the, Paul's dealing with these same issues over and over and over again in all his epistles. It just keeps on coming up. So, that's the frustrating thing when Galatians is guys, well, you don't you if you put place yourself under the law, you just must not have read Galatians. It says, well, if you're reading Galatians that way, you're just not comparing it with the rest of everything else that Paul's written. So anyway, yeah, these guys, he's talking to the same guys, talking about the same guys here in uh, in First Corinthians nine as as the ones uh, who are perverting the gospel in Galatians one seven.